Hey guys, thanks for coming back and watching another video. Today I'm talking about these new vegetables I've planted, cool season crops, and how do I protect them when we have a nighttime low temperature, possibly a frost or early season freeze, or on the other side, if we have a late season frost or freeze, how do you protect them? Well, I came up with something and I'd seen some other people doing something similar to this, but the one thing component they were missing was one of these. This is a tool that will help prevent these from getting overheated on specific days that's warm in the day but really cool at night if you're really busy and you don't have a chance to check on your seedlings cuttings or whatever else you have in the garden that needs protection from frost but also needs protection from daytime extremes if you have a hot temperature and you have these covered this little device right here will prevent them from getting too hot during the day so let's go in the greenhouse and i'll show you exactly what i've got the idea i've got and i'll show you how to put it together so the concept here is the same as this small tray right here with a humidity dome. And the key item is the air vent here on top. And it's the same thing I'm talking about, but on a much larger scale that can be connected together. And I'll show you how to do that with one of these. I'm going to show you how to make this, but I'm going to give you a little bit more detail on how to protect your seedlings, cuttings, early, late season plants or early season plants where there's that chance of frost and you just have to, no time during the day to monitor it. you're at work or you're really busy. This device will save your plants from getting that nighttime frost when you don't have a chance to go out in the morning and take your covers off and go back. This is an automatic device that's completely electric free and it works based upon temperature and that is the key. So the one device that makes all of this work is this right here. This is an automatic foundation vent. It completely works off of temp air temperature not electricity no mechanical things like that is completely self-sufficient it doesn't need anything to work except for changes in air temperature and the way it works i'll give you a close-up so you i'll bring the camera in so you can see exactly what's going on inside i'll try to take it apart a little bit and explain it a little bit more now the way this automatic foundation vent it works is really genius it's from the 20th century this is not a 21st century invention it's so basic but if you'll see there's a little coil in there these louvers are controlled by that coil, and if you purchase one of these, you can test it in your own freezer. It's amazing how simple it is, but it's a great idea when you use it in the garden. But this coil, as it reaches 40 degrees, will start to contract, and it will close these louvers. As it hits 70 degrees inside of your container system, this coil will start to unravel itself and open the vent and allow the hot air to escape. So it's just really a, a amazing technology that's from the last century but it works still and it's based on science, but that's it right there. That's what makes this whole thing possible. So to make this work, you're going to need a few items. You're going to need obviously the foundation vent. Now these are made for homes and specifically homes with crawl spaces where there's a moisture problem in the crawl space and they just allow airflow in and out of that crawl space. They will work very simply by that air temperature difference. And it's the same concept in your garden. If your plants need a certain temperature stability, this will provide that. So you might be thinking these are going to be really expensive per tote or per container that you're using, but you can use this right here to connect them together. Now the prices vary depending on where you get it, whether you pick it up yourself at your local hardware store or if you order it online. I ordered this in directly from Amazon and I'll put the link, but the price ranges from about $16 up to $30 because on Amazon, everybody thinks shipping is free, but it's actually included in the price. So there's no real shipping, free shipping on Amazon, excuse me. So anyways, that's what you're going to pay for this. This is the most, this is the most, one of the most expensive parts of your system, depending on what size totes you get. Larger totes obviously might be up to 25 or $30, but that's the key is you can cover a larger group of plants and you don't have to worry about when you're at work or when you're gone during the day and you suddenly have a temperature spike, this will save your plants from getting overheated. So there's a couple of other items that we can put inside of our tote that will keep the temperature at night from dipping down below freezing and protect it from frost. And I'll show you those too. First, I'm going to have to move my demonstration table or as some people have called it the earthquake table because it moves every time I touch it. And so a lot of people probably think I'm in Southern California, but I'm in the Southeast, I promise you. But that's what's happening is it's just not the best table. Maybe I can get around to making a more stable filming table sometime in the future. But let me move this out of the way and I'll show you exactly what we're going to do. Now, as you can see, this tote is really large and the ideal situation is to find a tote that has a smooth bottom. Unfortunately, I could not find that, but you can see because of the size of this, you can put quite a few of your tender plants or cuttings underneath. 
And so if you have multiple totes, and I'll show you how to link them together with only one automatic foundation vent, but this tote right here, we're going to install the uh, foundation vent on one side of it. Now you say, why one side? Well, we want it to be on the south side, and it's going to be the side that gets the most sunlight. And also we're going to put something on the south side on the interior that will retain heat through the night. But this is the size tote I'm using. You can use any size tote you have or want, uh, but the, a key element would be a smoother bottom. Unfortunately, I couldn't find that, but I've got an idea where I did this on my previous tote that will stop airflow from around the sides of the tote. Now these tubs tend to be very brittle and I've tried to use a jigsaw, an old jigsaw that has some damage to it, but this jigsaw still works, but it has a very fine tooth blade. But even with a fine tooth blade, it still is too fast for this, this tote. These are very brittle. So there's something you have to do before you start cutting. And I would recommend don't using, don't use a jigsaw because it's just too powerful. But what you do need to do is you need either a hairdryer or in my case, I have a heat gun. This heat gun is, I bought it for removing wallpaper from a wall probably 20 years ago. But these little devices will heat up much, much harder than a hairdryer. And what we're going to do is we're going to soften up the outside of this and then we're going to go in with a cutting a, a, a box cutter and remove out our piece of plastic. But before we do that, we have to measure the exact size of the tote. And I've taken the, excuse me, not the tote, the back side of the foundation vent on the tote. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure the exact size and we're going to cut out an exact hole exactly the right size. And as you can see, there's a lip on the outer part of the foundation vent. And so we need to know exactly where that lip is so we can fit this down in the hole so we don't have excess air. We're gonna use a very special type of tape that I often use in different garden situations and it's waterproof and it will last for quite a while. So this device, once you put it together, you can use it year after year after year. It's something that will just be there on standby as you need it. You can store it in a storage building or a garage. And then when you need it, it's gonna save the day when your plants, there's that danger of frost. You might even consider downloading a frost freeze app on your phone so you're warned when a frost is coming so you'll know to break out your automatic tote and you can take it out to your garden and your, you can protect your plants just for that night or whatever nights you get those freeze warnings. Okay, so I've got to measure exactly where we're going to cut. Now we've got to take into account again that lip from the bottom of this, but we're going to just carefully measure and I'm going to use the foundation vent itself as our marker to go through and know exactly where we've got to do this. Now, unfortunately, like I said earlier, this is not a smooth bottom and that would have been ideal, but that's just the way things are. You can't always get what you want. So I'm just measuring exactly where this is at so I can cut out the right, um, the right dimensions. And I'm gonna mark this side. And we're just gonna make sure it's gonna fit in there as easy as possible before I heat it up. And so I'll come back in with my foundation vent and use it as our marker. And so I'm just kind of cheating here. I'm just gonna use that like that. And of course, it's gonna make it a lot easier to cut since we have our heat gun. And that goes there. And so it's kind of messy, but this is just something we're gonna use in the garden. So it doesn't have to be all that pristine. And it looks okay. So there we go. That's what we're going to cut out and what we're going to leave a hole opening. And so I'm going to fast forward through this. So you don't have to watch every single minute, but this way you'll get an idea of how it fits into place. So guys, we've got our hole cut out of our tote and it's perfectly cut. And I will tell you that if you try to use the jigsaw, it's just too powerful. Most cutting tools will cut through this and cause chipping. I'll show you in a minute one that I've done previously 
and it has a lot of chips in it because I was trying to do it the shortcut way. So if you take your time and do that slowly, use your heat gun, or if you don't have a heat gun, use your hair dryer. You can get these at the big box store or on Amazon. I'll put the link in Amazon, but to Amazon. But this really makes it easier because it softens up the plastic and it makes your easier easier. It makes your razor blade easier to cut through. Sometimes my mouth gets behind my brain. But anyways, this is how we're going to set it in there. And so we still have an air gap around the edges, and that's why we're going to need our special electric electrician's tape, and that will seal it around here. Now, the vent, like I said, we're going to automatically open and close depending on outdoor temperature or in, in, temperature more specifically inside of here, because if you look below the louvers is where the um, coil is that opens and closes it. So let's get our tape, and we'll do that, and we'll seal this up. Now, before I move on to the taping procedure, I want to show you what happened previously. I'm going to hope that's in camera. You can see where I used the razor blade around this side, but I started cutting with my jigsaw. And the jigsaw, even though it's got an extremely fine tooth blade, is just too powerful and it cuts through. And this is brittle. Now, maybe if I'd used my heat gun before I used the jigsaw, maybe that would work. But it's really not hard to cut through if you just take your time and cut a little at a time and use a hairdryer or a wallpaper heat gun those come in handy for other things as well like remodeling your bathroom or something i think that's why i bought it but anyways that's what you need to remember is don't use your jigsaw use a razor blade and a heat gun or a hair dryer now somebody had asked me about this tape and they said it just looks like duct tape actually it's not duct tape it's thinner than duct tape specifically electricians use it i know that because we had an electrician in the family and that's where i got my first roll of this i ordered my second roll from amazon and it's lasted for quite a while i'll put the link to that as well but it's made by 3m and the thing that's different about it from duct tape duct tape when it gets really hot tends to be it kind of melts. It has a stickiness to it. This doesn't do that. And this will, this is waterproof. It's used for connecting uh, wiring. So I'm just going to do this real quick. And hopefully I'm going to guesstimate the end sizes. And so we're going to put it really close to the end and try to seal that hole properly. If we have to, we'll come back and put a second layer of tape, but I'm just trying to make sure that hole is sealed. Now, this is not a perfect sealed system. There is probably a microscopic amount of air that's getting through. I'm sorry, I know that's really loud. Okay, but we're just trying to seal it as best we can. And we're going to give it a little bit of, make sure we seal that kind of right there. Okay. And so we just want to keep that airflow at nighttime. We want to keep the air inside of here. Now, I told you at the beginning of the video, I use another device to hold in heat inside of here as well. And it's so simple. It's nothing complicated. And I actually get mine for free. So I'm going to seal up the side. And this is a little messy. But like I said, this is one of those things you'll put in your garage after you make it. And forget about it until you get that frost warning on your phone. Okay. Do it on this side. And there we go. So we've got a sealed watertight system. Now, when I say watertight, I'm talking about this part. This will allow water to pass through. So if it rains at night, there's going to be water going through here. So probably, excuse me, it probably would stop snow, but it's not going to stop water. It is not watertight in that aspect. I'm, when I say watertight, I'm talking about the taped outer edges. So we'll just seal that down. I think we're good. And so I'm going to demonstrate this and I'm going to take it out to the garden and show you a couple of more things that this simple devices will make it even more effective. So let's head out there. So let's imagine we have some seedlings or we have bought some cuttings out late season or in the springtime, early seasons. And there's that chance of extreme temperatures during the nighttime and also during the day. It might warm up to 60, 70 or even higher. That happens here a lot. So what we want to do is we're protecting those. We're going to bring in something this is what i call my radiator and it's going to absorb heat during the day and at nighttime it's going to slowly release it and so it's just a simple recycled water jug that we buy water in and so this is going to absorb heat during the day at nighttime it's going to slowly release that heat our little mini greenhouse doors are going to be closed automatically so that heat is going to be in here now there's a couple of more things i can do just in case it's going to get extremely cold and i'll show you that but let's put our greenhouse in place Okay, so this is our mini greenhouse, and you can see my four, my four foot wide bed is 
would be capable of having two of these. So what if I had multiple, let's say this would hold four of these large size tubs and I wanted to cover all four areas, but I only want to buy one automatic foundation vents. Here is a product that I purchased on Amazon. We can link these together by cutting a round hole just slightly smaller than the di diameter of this. It's made of, basically this is for AC. It's an AC flexible duct work. And so we can connect these and only have to purchase one of our AC, excuse me, our foundation vents. So basically they'd all be connected by the ends or by the sides. And so when it gets hot and the temperature rises, this will open, release all the heat from all four of them. So that is one of those things that if you have a large, large area of small planting you want to cover, just buy more tubs. If you have a smaller area, just buy a small tub. If you just have some seedlings or if you have a tray that you want to protect during the day so it gets some sunlight but protect it at nighttime from that cold, you can just go with a tub maybe half the size. But this tub would hold quite a bit underneath. And if we multiplied it, it would do the same thing. It would just cover an entire four by eight bed, which is exactly what this is. So what if there's the danger of an extreme frost down into the 20s or something like that, maybe even, let's say 24, 25, 26 degrees. Now this, this is not heated. And even though we have the gallon jug in there, there's no guarantee that even that will stop the cold temperature making it inside here. This is not a foolproof system, but there's some things you can do to mitigate that chance as you can pile up around the outer edges, you can pile up your mulch, put it all the way around or put pine straw all the way around. Another thing you can do is if you have some incandescent Christmas lights, put inside of here, put inside of the tub and that, that puts out just a small amount of heat and that will really take you through some cold temperatures. Don't use LED, those don't put out enough light. So you want the old fashioned incandescent outdoor rated Christmas lights and that will keep the temperature more stable. But if you don't wanna use Christmas lights, let's do this. Now I'm thinking about putting in double pane windows in my house. And this is the same concept. You're gonna put in your first tub, bring in your second tub, and now you have an air layer that's protecting it at nighttime. It will release the hot air from inside the first, the main tub, and your second tub will be more protected in the nighttime. Now there's, there is that chance that the second tub may get too hot, but if you're getting those really cold nighttime temperatures, that's what you can do. You can make it a double window type effect where you have two layers of plastic rather than one, and it will protect those seedlings, cuttings, or whatever you have, either late season and fall where you have the chance of nighttime temperatures dropping, or in the springtime, you also have that tem temperature variances at nighttime. So this is the system and that's how it works. And I hope you'll consider doing it. I've put all the links at the bottom to every product. And so it's not hard to build. It just takes a little bit of patience and testing. I'll tell you about some other things you can do to make sure that the temperature in here is safe. But let's go on to that little section now. Now, we're back in the greenhouse and I just want to go over one or two more things and maybe some rapid fire questions at the end. Let's say we have our precious seedlings and we want to protect them from those nighttime temperatures. One more thing you can do is you can purchase some of this flexible insulation wrap. This goes around hot water heaters and attics. Uh, you could cover your garage doors with it. It's just another barrier against those extreme temperatures. Now, I wouldn't say put it on the top because you still want light coming in the top of your clear totes or semi-clear totes, but you could use this around the size. It's easy to cut. I'll show you real quick. You can cut it with scissors. And so you can cut it to the exact size you need it around your totes, around the walls of your tote. That will help too. You could cut a piece for the top just as an emergency to lay over the top at nighttime. But the whole purpose of the tote and the reason you have the automatic foundation vent is if you're busy during the day or if you go to work early or if you just forget about it for a day or two, you know those vents are going to open and close, allowing the hot air to escape. And at nighttime, they're going to close protecting. So this is another product I'll put in the link, but it's just a super simple way and it's waterproof and it's flexible so you could use that as well another thing if early early morning if you go out late at night and you want to check the soil temperatures or the temperatures of your cuttings you can use one of these it is a soil ph meter but it also will give you an idea of temperatures so that's another thing you can do to check the temperatures of the cuttings the pots themselves if they're in a pot large enough or if you have it directly planted in the soil, you can do the same thing and you can just monitor the top couple of inches 
Now this would be really late at night or extremely early in the morning because once you get up and once the sun comes up, those soil temperatures are going to raise up. So it would only be affected if you do it at night. I'll put the link to the one of these and it does Celsius and Fahrenheit as well, but it's a great little tool. It's a four in one. It measures light, uh, temperature, pH, and moisture content. So it's, a, it's an extremely inexpensive tester and I just got it the other day. My old testers my oldest tester goes back 20 years and the one after that maybe goes back 10 years. So I wanted to kind of upgrade to a more recent one, digital, and I really like it. It uses, I, the, my second one that I had was digital as well. It did not have a backlight and it used watch batteries. And I hate looking for watch batteries or I hate buying watch batteries. I always have double A's and triple A's. So this one right here uses triple A and it uses four triple A's. So that makes it easy for me because I always have triple A's because remote controls and whatever else I have around the house, I have tons of those. So consider getting one of these. It's going to help you monitor your pH, soil temperature, moisture, and even a little sensor on there that will measure amount of light you're getting. So right now it's telling me I have low light. So that must mean the daylight is going and I see the sun is going down over the hill. So a couple more things. I'm going to do a rapid fire Q and a, and one last thing about monitoring the temperature inside where you can prove to yourself that this works. So I'm going to reverse it up despite what I said. The other item that I was talking about is a sensor you can put under your tub and I'm too lazy to walk in back into the house to get it, but it's a smart sensor that will send a message via Wi-Fi back to the receiver and ultimately to your smartphone that will tell you what the low and it will measure humidity temperature over the night over a period of hours so that way you'll know exactly what's happening so if you don't feel like going in doing your tester you'll know you'll be nice and warm and cozy in your bed and you'll know exactly what's happening outside in your tub so that's another thing so now on to the last part which is the q a the several q a's that nobody's asked me a question yet but i'm just going to anticipate what people might ask so let's go on to that part. So let's do a quick rundown of our totes or our supersized greenhouse. And so this is a great item that I think will help a lot of people who don't have a greenhouse or don't have a cold frame. And so let's run through some questions. Now the size of your plant is obviously going to determine the size of the tote, but you also need to anticipate the growth over a period of a month or two, however you're going to, however long you're going to use the tote. So remember, you want to anticipate that even though you're plant may be this size in a month or two, it may double in size. So remember to anticipate that growth phase of however long you can make it last into the winter. Our winters are cold, but they're nothing like the extreme north. Now the next question is going to be about what about using non-clear totes? Uh, that might help during the daytime when the temperatures do get too hot, but you also want the benefit of that semi-transparent tote, allowing just a little bit of sunlight. Also that will help in your water jug, heating it up as well. So you can use a non-transparent or non-semi-transparent tote, but I just like the transparent totes. It just, in my mind, that serves more as a better greenhouse. So the next thing I want to say is that it's obvious that this automatic foundation vent is going to help with airflow. One thing you could do is if you put a foundation vent on the side of one or on the opposite side of one, you might have an airflow effect. And it's not going to be a big airflow effect, but if you have one on the top and one on the side, you're going to be the air escaping out the top is going to be pulled into the side. So I didn't make one with two uh, vents, which you could easily do. It's just going to double the price on your vents, but that could also increase airflow inside naturally. It's not going to be a gust of wind, but it will be kind of a natural airflow happening. Now you absolutely want to have the tote resting on the ground flat and you want it to pile up either mulch or straw. I think mulch is better because it's going to allow less moisture in. You might even put topsoil around it. So just make sure that at the base, you're protecting in that little area, even though it may be a quarter of an inch, you just want to make sure that the base of your tote is protected from air seeping into the bottom. If you live in an area that has high winds, these totes could easily be blown away. We don't get a lot of high winds. My property is protected by trees and fencing and other buildings. But if you have an open area where winds could come in and blow your tote over, put some bricks or large rocks on the top to prevent those from blowing away. So that's one thing, if you live in an open area and you've got that strong wind that could come in in the winter nights or the fall nights or the early, early spring nights, make sure you do something to prevent your tote from becoming a sail because you've got those flat sides. And when the wind hits it, you're going to have that possibility of it being just knocked over and your ceilings or your cuttings are now completely exposed. Now, another benefit of the automatic foundation vent opening and closing is you're going to cut down on extreme humidity inside, which humidity is great, but sometimes over a period of time, 
you could have a fungal issue with too much buildup of humidity. So that helps with your humidity level by that daily opening and closing of your vent. And I think that will be a good thing. So as I showed previously in the video, the doubling of your totes will help with that air barrier in between the totes, that two layer effect. If you live somewhere where you're gonna have cold nights, really cold nights down in the 20s, that can act as a double barrier, like a double pane window. It can just help insulate your cuttings or ceilings just a little bit better. Now, if you have a smartphone, and most people do today, you can download free apps that will give you frost warnings. I don't know one off the top of my head. I think I have two on my phone, but I don't have my phone with me, so I can't pull it up easily, but I don't want to endorse one over the other. So just look for a frost warning app that will give you an alert if you do have frost coming. And let's say you get home from work, you get that notification. You can pull one of these out of your garage and go, go and take it over your um, cuttings, your seedlings, or whatever's in the garden that can't be moved. That will save your seedlings or cuttings very easily. Now, one thing, if you have things planted out there that can't be moved and you think there could be some late season pest, insects, whatever, use my, I have a mixture of neem oil and one other product you can use is completely organic. I'll put the link uh, to that video and that will help because that warmth is where exactly where an insect would want to be. It's protected and it's got a free meal there and it's just got just the right temperature to survive longer into the winter. So make sure you do that. Spray it with some neem oil and the other product I use. Uh, like I said, I put that link there so you can look at that video as well. Now, although this will protect your plants during those transitional times in spring or fall, it's really not a long-term greenhouse. You just want to use this sparingly and allow your plants to acclimate during the day. So you might take it off during the daytime and then you know that frost is coming at night and just go back and forth on that. It's a lot of extra work, but it saves you from losing some valuable time that you put into raising seedlings or cuttings and it just saves you that time. And also it will save it if you've purchased them from the store, those will survive five, $6 a piece that can get really expensive, expensive if, if you lose them there. Now, this is a point I made earlier, but remember, if you can have some type of incandescent lantern that's safe for outdoor use, battery operated, that'll put out just a little bit of heat or Christmas lights that are incandescent LEDs don't put out much heat. So I don't think that's going to make much difference. But if you have some of the old fashioned Christmas lights that used to put out heat, you'd put your hand on them. You could actually feel the heat. You might put those inside the tote with them on a small string set and put that on a timer. You don't want that heating up during the day because it just adds more heat when it doesn't need it. So put those on a timer and inside the tote. Now all totes will become brittle over time. You can use these two, three, four years, or maybe even longer, depending on the quality of the tote. Most of them are UV resistant and heat resistant and cold resistant. But like I said, they do tend to be brittle even from the beginning, but over time the totes will become more and more brittle. So you might get five to 10 years out of one, but then eventually you'll have to replace it. But your foundation vent, some of those were designed to last for decades. So that little coil in there, will just continue working year after year after year. So that's one thing to remember that your totes have a more limited lifespan and your foundation vent a much longer lifespan. Now remember at the end of each season when you're finished using your tote to spray it down with some, I use Listerine on the inside of it so you can kill any pathogens that may have built up over that period of time you're using it. Uh, Listerine is so cheap, you can get the generic equivalent at the dollar store, the dollar general, the big box store, wherever, but just go with the generic brand because this isn't something you're using for your daily uh, teeth brushing needs or something like that. This is just something you're using to clean out any possible bacteria on the inside of the tote. Now, as I said previously, there's no one size fits all of this. If you have a extreme severe freeze, it's not going to help. Even this greenhouse, as big as it is, I have to put a heater in here in the wintertime, January, February, when we start getting those extreme temperatures over a period of days. So even though the tote will extend the season or let you begin the next year's season earlier, it's not a guaranteed thing. So you have to remember that it does have its limitations. So guys, we've just basically supersized this little thing right here and we've automated it through our foundation vent. So I hope it helps you in preserving the life of your seedlings or cuttings later into the year or be able to start them earlier in the winter next year. For those of you people who live in 50 degree or above winters, as my wife once did, I'm very envious of that because we do get some cold temperatures last year. I think we hit eight degrees for a number of days and I lost some very old shrubs that I really regret losing. But anyways, I just want to say thank you so much for watching and I really appreciate you coming back and watching the Zen Garden Oasis channel. I hope if something helped you or you liked the channel in general, just like and subscribe. That's really greatly appreciated. I want to give you a personal thank you to each person who has subscribed 
or if you leave me a comment, I really appreciate that too. Good comments are very make you feel good, but I like the comments that are critical and that tell me, hey, you're doing this wrong because that is the best way to learn. Nobody learns from being told you're the greatest. No, you learn when people tell you're doing something wrong. And although it kind of stings a little bit, it makes you think. So it makes me think. So anyways, whether your comment is good or bad, positive or negative, I really appreciate it. So guys, have a great day. And the sun is going down. So this one is over. I can't believe I finished before dark.